So, yes, who's been on one of my workshops, right now we are in between workshops and me have come up on this beautiful plateau where we have some of the Faroe Islands here in the background. And since I'm talking about the standard lens that be a 24-70, 20-70, 24-105, maybe even 24 to 120, which is just such a great and relatively versatile lens. It's just great to have on you when you are out hiking, because whenever something happens, you can just take it out and shoot. So as I mentioned, we have all these amazing islands and it gives a really, really great backdrop right here. So what I'm going to do is, of course, I'm going to go into the scene and place myself right here. I'm going to take a shot both at 70 millimeter and one at 100 millimeter, but in vertical mode. So there's two different versions where you can see them all the way out with what would be a standard zoom lens. I'm actually shooting at my 28 to 200 millimeter because I don't use a standard zoom right now. This is a super zoom, but for the sake of argument, you can see what a standard zoom lens can do in an environment like this right here. So in regard to the settings, I'm using the intervalometer, putting it on, interval of like six seconds. So I have a little bit of time in between the photos to just reposition myself if I need to. And then I'm shooting at F16. ISO 100 gives me a shutter speed of 1 30th of a second because I can actually overexpose by an entire stop simply because it's such a flat, snowy scene. And that's the thing with snowy scenes, you can generally overexpose them by one stop, maybe a little bit more to get a proper composition. But now I will run into the scene and get the photo both at 70 millimeter in horizontal version and a vertical version at 100 millimeter. I didn't get the photos I was after and these, although fine, weren't really that interesting due to the flat and boring sky. As you will see in just a moment, I got some way better and incredible photos with this lens. We did plan to go a little bit further up the mountain, but the snow stopped us when we had to cross a half frozen waterfall and we didn't know exactly what was underneath the snow. After all, we didn't have a death wish. Instead we flew the drones and with the 28mm camera it falls within the standard lens zoom range, although technically a wide angle focal length. If you do end up in a situation having a lens on your camera that is too narrow, you can always shoot panoramas. Making panoramas is essentially the same as photographing with a wider lens, but with the benefit of more megapixels and details in the final file. In this first example, I made a horizontal panorama of three photos, and in this example here, I made a vertical panorama of four photos. As you saw in last week's video, all about the wide-angle lens, this trip to the Faroes presented some rather difficult conditions with all the wind and snow. Okay, who am I kidding? With a continuous blast of blizzards. However, extreme conditions makes for potentially extremely great and in this case unique photos. One such place was at the top of this mountain. <laughs> what a hike to get up here! So we are at the top of a little settlement here in the Faroes called Funingur, and I have put on my 28 to 200 millimeter, and I'm at around 40 millimeter, and I think that works really, really well for this specific location here. So you can see mountain here, and then we stand here. We have this beautiful S-curve fjord, and some more mountains here in the background, and then. We take tours, I'm going out here, standing here, while we get these amazing small snow tornadoes coming in and blowing through the scene from time to time the sun pops out. It looks absolutely amazing. So this here is actually a location where you can use a wide angle lens like 16 to 35 millimeter. However, there are just so many beautiful mountains in this area where you do want to zoom in a little bit more like 70 millimeter 105 millimeter so you can see here the mountain range over here looks really good with the longer focal lengths this part here also looks really really good and even though you can shoot very wide right here 
I generally prefer to zoom a little bit in, so in this case 40 millimeter, simply just so I get a little bit more focused view. So it's the relation between the S-curve and the person here in the foreground that the photo is all about. Just look at that. Just look at that. <laughs> So it's these snow tornadoes that blow in from time to time that we try to capture. Settings wise, I am on f11 or f16, ISO 100 gives me a fast shutter speed of either 1 200th of a second or 1 400th of a second. Since it's winter there's plenty of light to go about right here. And the thing with using a standard zoom is that you can hit those focal lengths between 40 and 50 millimeter, maybe up to 60, a little bit lower. And it gives like this very normal look. So it's not so much about using the wide angle lens to create like a dramatic foreground or the telephoto lens to create that perspective compression. However, it is just normal. You rely much more on the elements, on the conditions, on the composition, on the mountain. Amazing. I returned with another group the following week and we got fairly similar conditions, although no snow tornadoes. Instead of getting exactly the same photos, I tried shooting a bit wider, which also made for a little time lapse. Getting down from a snowy mountain like this is always great fun and near the bottom the sun broke through and I managed to capture this photo. Whether I use the 24-205 or 28-200mm, I usually always make sure to attach my standard zoom lens when I'm on the move. Besides actually having the specific focal length you'll need for a specific scene, the strongest feature of the standard focal length lens is it's fairly wide in the short end going into the wide angle lens territory and being a short telephoto in the long end. The standard zoom focal range is just great at helping out capturing those fleeting moments. Obviously, you'll also need to have a grasp of composition, so if you want to learn more about that, definitely get my ebooks. They also work as great reminders in the field if there's something you're in doubt about or if you need inspiration. Check them out via the links in the description of the video and let's get back to the standard lens. In this example, hiking to Kalor Lighthouse on Kalsoy, there's a fantastic view towards the neighboring island, Kunoy, and the standard lens is perfect for capturing the changing light in that direction. Likewise, getting back down offers the same view, but obviously with different light and conditions. Up at the lighthouse there are also plenty to use the standard lens for. This location really is a gem. Despite you are more or less standing in the same location, there is just so much variety. Everything from super wide angle over the standard focal length to the telephoto, as you will see in the upcoming video, about how I use the telephoto lens in the Faroes. Another example is the hike to the famous sea stack Dranganir. Although our hike was shortened by a boat trip, I still managed to capture some beautiful photos using my 28-200, yet again within the standard lens focal range. Just look at these photos towards Dranganir and Tinholmur. The sea stack and island just makes for the perfect subjects and especially with the leading line in the foreground. Epic, yet simple. It was such a treat to have so much snow and occasional magical light. And speaking of magical light, just watch this.
So we are right now at Kalbak Spotnur and we have been waiting the entire morning for like different snow showers coming in and passing and hopefully the sun will come out and out came the sun. And we have this absolutely gorgeous valley and fjord and then the sun coming out and backlighting all the drifting snow through the scene. It looks spectacular. So just before I ran down here, stood down here. So I'm going to blend together a shot where I'm standing down here with this magnificent scene here when the snow comes in. So we actually just had a road cleaner or snow cleaner on the road pass us that blew also a lot of snow out into the scene, which we also caught. So generally, as you can see, we just have snow coming into the scene, being backlit by the sun all the time. A lot over here. And that just makes for a spectacular photo. Right now I'm shooting between 35 millimeter and 50 millimeter, a little bit in, a little bit out. And I generally try to shoot a little bit broader than what I think I need because there's so many details that I may want to include, but there's obviously also the chance that I'm going to crop in simply just to make sure that I don't include everything. Shooting into the sun like this, I'm taking a lot of bracketed photos too. So I have details and shadows, highlights and in the mid. And I also make sure to just take a lot of single exposures. So when the snow comes in, I can just capture everything. So it has literally been like this the entire morning with snow just coming down from the mountains, being blown around by the wind. And then in combination with the sun. Looks spectacular. So how about that? Was that not magical? <laughs> we just had amazing conditions in the Faroe Islands. Beautiful winter conditions, winter light. Right now I am running my spring sale on my big Photoshop landscape photographers. So you can actually get entire hundred dollars off. It is in this course where I share all my different techniques so that you can learn how to edit photos and get the most out of your photos, all the potential that there are in those raw files. I not just show you all the techniques, I also discuss like my philosophy around editing, respecting the light, making sure you don't make editing mistakes, how to avoid them, just to give you those extra 2% of quality into your photos that actually makes you stand out and look like an advanced or even professional landscape photography post processor. The coupon code is of course down in the description as per always $100 off. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.